Well, I think it has to do with the fact, Gene, that for the most part, I think every Democrat can look at their field right now and say that there is at least one candidate who represents them. And their rhetoric towards each other has not been the the bomb throwing that we've seen over on the Republican side. So I think it's very, you know, it's very logical to say that the Democrats feel pretty good right now. I, if you look at the Republican side, you have people like Matt and myself who look at the field and we just, we hate our lives, <laughs> to be quite honest, because Matt, there's no one. <laughs> uh, not for reasons relating to politics. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Well, listen, we got a, a comment in the chat room that we periodically check into here. Uh, one of the comments says that you have to remember that there's still a lot of folks out there that don't care about the election right now, but will show up in November. Matt, do you think that there are a lot of people like that? I mean, it's hard to gauge on a primary night here in the People's Republic of New York. But do you think well, that there think, are a lot of people like that? You know, I think that's true. I, I saw a stat, uh, and this is only for Suffolk County, but something like 19% of registered Democrats showed up to vote today and 20% of registered Republicans showed up to vote today. You know, it wasn't a, a gigantic turnout day. Uh, and the general elections always bring in more voters than primaries. You know, people feel like they should show up for the general election in a way that they don't feel like they should show up for a primary, especially in New York. And New York is an odd state to use because it is a, it, it is a closed primary state where you have to be a member of the party to show up and you have to have been a member of the party for six months to show up. So New York is a, it, it, it is not, you know, it's kind of an outlier in that regards. So I do think that there are a lot of people who are going to show up who have not quite yet engaged. But, you know, like unlike prior years, you know, this is kind of in many ways a very much a celebrity election in that the two main uh, candidates on each side are people who have been in the public eye for decades. Hillary Clinton has been in America's public eye since 1991 when her husband ran – for president for the first time and and Donald Trump has been a mainstay of the tabloids and has been a reality TV star and has been you know you know a guest referee at, Wrestle, at WrestleMania going back decades so you have these two extraordinarily well known people vying for the presidency and I think that kind of changes the calculus that you see in previous years and that yeah there's a lot of people who aren't engaged in our voting right now but I think they're probably a little bit more aware of what's going on that has been in prior years. And you know what? This brings up a perfect segue, thank you, Matt Fairley, to the news breaking out of our home borough here in Brooklyn, New York, that according to Gothamist, Gothamist.com, check it out for yourself, folks, 126,000 Brooklyn Democrats have been removed from active voter rolls since last November, 44,000 rendered inactive, 70,000 purged entirely, and 12,000 more were listed as having left the borough. Uh, clearly, someone at the Board of Elections, and you know, full disclosure, we know just about everybody at the Board of Elections, Democrat and Republican. Somebody's got some splaining to do, Amanda, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, Gene, we, we know that per, uh, ro- voter roll purges happen. It's standard. It's in the law. I have never in my life... Well, I should... Let me amend that. The last time I have heard of such a massive voter purge was in the 2000 election in Florida. Two days in my memory, I I cannot remember any purge of this scale. Now, now just so you know, they had to have two judges in Brooklyn that uh, both Matt and I have probably been before. Judge uh, Wavni Toussaint and Judge Janine Edwards uh, were both inundated with seven-hour shifts of voters coming in, begging and pleading to show up to vote. Uh, for those of you who don't understand what happens here in New York, uh, if you're not on a voter list, know there's no voter ID. You can just show up and sign a book, and you can vote, uh, as long as you are a registered voter in the voter book. Uh, if you're not there, for whatever reason, whether you've been rendered inactive, uh, whether you've been purged for uh, whatever reason it may be, or if they, you know, you put in one of those voter change cards and you change your address, you can still do a provisional ballot, an affidavit ballot, and they'll, those will be opened up and examined by the Board of Elections to see whether you are registered and enrolled in the party within that polling uh, election district. Uh, it's, it's nuts, though, to hear 
that number of voters, I mean, as we sit here right now, that number of voters can sway an election. Matt, from an attorney's point of view, and this is a loaded question, full disclosure, loaded question, how can someone credibly say that disenfranchising 125,000 voters in one county doesn't render election results undetermined? They, they really can't, and there's no good way that they can explain this. It, it, if you've been following the story, you know, the, the head of the Board of Elections said, well, you know, Brooklyn's been really behind in updating its list, so we just finally got around to it because we've had a lot of retirements, a lot of illnesses. And okay, fine, that's great, but it just ask yourself, is like, these are the people running the elections? <laughs> the people? They can't properly staff their own office, and they're running the elections to determine who's going to be president of the United States of America. Well, listen, I'll it, tell it, you, it our own fills you with gallery. dread. It fills you with existential dread. The other option, the, the other explanation, is active fraud, and that's even worse. So there's really you know no. That might be the more believable this. option, but but listen to this because you guys know this story, Matt. I'm, Matt, you I'm, know this I'm, story really I'm well. I don't believe that it's, it's incompetence. Oh, well, I'm not going for incompetence, but you know the story of our co-host, Russ Gallo, ran for office in 2012, and a judge actually said that his primary was so botched that you couldn't determine a winner, but they still let the results stand anyway. That This is the People's Republic of New York. So, oh, I mean, Gene, nothing surprises me anymore. Gene, I absolutely remember that because I was a poll watcher for Russ that year, and I remember that the... It was so botched that the polling site that I was working, the poll workers did not know how to tabulate the results that were coming out of the machines and put them onto the canvas sheet. I, a, a watcher, a poll watcher from a campaign, had to explain to them how to do their jobs. And that's just at one poll site. And when you think about the low standards that the New York City Board of Elections has, to recruit poll workers and multiply it by all the poll sites we have across the city. That is terrifying. Yeah, there are stories inundated in the New York press of difficulties voting across New York City. Uh, rest, uh, Mayor de Blasio already says that this, he's going to start an investigation into what exactly happened. Once again, and, and again, it's the Brooklyn Democrat side that this happened to. Uh, and uh, you l- listen, uh, we know the commissioner, we know the chief clerk, and I'm not going to name them on air because uh, just out of respect for you know common courtesy at this point. But I think there may be more of a story here than meets the eye, folks, and uh, it's not going to be good <laughs> for a lot of Brooklyn Democrats going forward. But you know what? Maybe this was how it was meant to be all along. Controversial election in the People's Republic of New York for the adopted hometown hero Hillary Clinton who is numbers continue to drop below the 50% mark. She may even get below 55% if the numbers keep going at this rate, guys. Uh, just another crazy, wacky New York primary season, huh, Matt? Uh, you know, I haven't been involved in New York politics nearly as long as the two of you, but honestly, at this point, nothing even begins to surprise me anymore. Nothing. Well, Gene, you know, there is one aspect of this that we haven't really explored in depth, but it is really its own kind of news headline for the New York primary in general. It's New York's very confusing voting laws, and especially surrounding party registration. It came out last week that Donald Trump's own kids were not registered Republicans, had not done a party change in time to, to be able to vote in the Republican primary. And that is a pretty big demographic of voters who wanted to participate in the in a primary, but were not registered in a party and were thus not eligible to vote. They didn't realize that in order to be eligible, you need to do a party registration change back in October, which is something that the Board of Elections does not really publicize at all. And... New York, unlike most other states in this country, does not have an open primary system, does not have a same-day voter enrollment. New York is one of the most prohibitive states in terms of voting, which is really surprising when you think about the fact that Democrats often say that Republicans are the ones disenfranchising the vote uh, voters. But meanwhile, we have a state that is entirely run by Democrats 
We have a single party rule here, and we probably have the most difficult electoral system in the country. I absolutely agree with you. Uh, New York's rules are pretty archaic, but the reason why they are that way is because we have fusion. We have what is known as fusion voting, whereby you can cross the door party lines and you have a lot of party rating. So that, to me, should be, you know, I've been saying for years we need to get rid of fusion to have a normal election cycle so that way we can have same day registration, that we can have early voting, although I'm against it. We can have these things if we want them. It's just a matter of changing the laws to make them have more sense. I don't think that a voter should have to wait six months to change their voter rolls and have to wait through an election cycle to do it. It disenfranchises them. It keeps them within that party circle. Matt, would you change the rules as well? Uh, I'm a bit of a heretic in Republican circles when it comes to these things. I'm not quite the zealot for voter ID that you guys are. But I do think that, you know, we need to find a way to make it easier for people to get into and register the votes that they intend to vote. If someone wants to be a Republican and vote in the Republican primary and register a vote for Donald Trump, for Ted Cruz, for John Kasich, I don't care who, if you want to vote, vote for whoever you want, we should find a way to make it easy yet verifiable. And, and New York, everything about the New York political system seems to be about consolidating the status quo and consolidating the parties that are in charge. And in many ways, I can understand where the Trump voters are coming from for that reason, because that is why they're so angry. It is a, you know, they look at the system and they say, we are being shut out by people who are pulling the strings. And that doesn't, that doesn't look good. It doesn't look good for the party. It doesn't look good for the system. So I just, I just think we need to find a way to make it easier for people to register the votes that they want to register. I, I agree with you that it has to be easy and it has to be a balance. I don't think that photo ID, voter ID is the way to go. But I remember when I registered the vote, you know, 20 years ago. Oh, my God, it's 20 years ago. Yeah, 20 years ago, when I registered the I got vote, you beat, so 22. Oh, man, we're the old men. But do you remember, Matt, when you registered the vote, you got something in the mail with a little tear-off card that had your name, address, party affiliation, and all the election districts and all the breakdowns of what your districts were when you went to vote? I know I got it, and I brought it with me the first time to the polls to show it to people. Why is that so such a horrible thing? I, I You know... There, this is, we're coming up on like the last two minutes of the show. We could go on for an hour on this. Fairly with the time management. I love it. But Wow. But the answer is, is that no one agrees yet. And the problem is, is that the people who are pulling the strings don't care. And that's the bottom line because Matt Fairley said so. Final thought time because Matt said we're running out of the show. Amanda, you go first real quick. 30 seconds. Go. I am just reveling in the fact that Ted Cruz has learned today about New York values. All right. Thanks for coming on. Check out Amanda Kohut at Amanda Kohut, K-O-H-U-T on the Twitters. Uh, she got a lot of interesting things to say over there. Matt Fairley, your turn. Go, pal. Uh, I, am rapidly, I, I am rapidly coming to terms with the fact that I live in an electoral district that voted for Bernie Sanders. <laughs> um, but I'm also starting to come to terms with the fact that Donald Trump is going to be the nominee for the Republican Party, and we all just need to start to learn to live with that fact. Please follow me on Twitter at FairlyM1999, F-A-I-R-L-E-Y-M 1999. Because I am shameless. There's an underscore, right? What a self-plug. That was fantastic. (laughs) My, My final thought real quick. As time winds down here, I'm coming to terms with the fact that we're having a president that will never forget 7-Eleven. And yet he still crushed <laughs> it in New York beyond that flub. We're out of time here, folks. I want to thank Amanda Coat and Matt Fairley coming on the show. And until next week, from the People's Republic of New York City, we are out of here. Time to shut it down. Good night, folks. Our position has been compromised. It's time to roll out. Report for debrief at www.behindenemylinesradio.us and look for regular communications via Facebook and Twitter at BEL underscore radio. You are the resistance behind enemy lines.
part of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, a rock 